In today's video, I'll be showing you my 40 watt crank generator. Now I made this from a scrapped dishwasher motor. The dishwasher was fairly new. There was problems with the control board, so I took out the motor. And this pulley you're looking at here is 11 inches. This was removed from a large air handler. Now the motor that you're looking at right here is an alternating current motor. It's two poles. It was rated for 3,450 RPM, and it had a start winding and a run winding. Now I didn't want to make this into an induction generator because the problem is, in order to have the proper frequency and output, this would have to be spun extremely fast, and then I'd have to play around getting the speed just right for the proper output. So what I decided to do was open the motor up, take out the rotor, and drill it out and install some neodymium magnets and make it a permanent magnet alternator. Because this motor is only a single phase and not a three phase, ideally you would want to look for a three phase motor. They're a lot more efficient. If you wanted to use an alternator, the only problem is it's very hard to modify the rotor. So that is why I decided to use this single phase dishwasher motor. I took the run winding and the start windings. I rectified both of the windings and combined them into one output. The shaft of the motor is a quarter inch shaft. I needed it to be half inch for the one and a half inch pulley you see here. So I purchased a quarter inch by half inch bronze bushing to go with my inch and a half V-groove pulley. The belt is a Gates belt, half inch wide belt, and the pulley is also half inch by 11 inches in diameter. The diameter of the large pulley from the air handler was a one inch bore. I had to reduce that down using a bronze bushing from one inch to five eighths. The handle is made from a four inch bolt. I drilled a hole inside the pulley, which is cast iron, and then I put a washer and I slid over this brass tube so as I rotate, the tube can move. Now for every one revolution on this large pulley, as you can see in this image right here, it will result in eight revolutions on the small. It's an eight to one ratio. So if the large pulley is rotated, two and a quarter turns per second, which is not so fast, you will have a thousand RPMs on the one and a half inch pulley. Now to make the shaft for the large pulley, I needed a 5 8 diameter rod, and luckily I came across one of these foot pegs from a telephone pole. So I cut that off, sanded this smooth, coated the whole thing with, with wheel bearing grease, and then I cut using my Dremel and a hacksaw grooves to slide on the E-clip like that, which goes right over the end. You can't see it, there's grease on it. This is very strong, rotates really easy. The entire unit is made out of a two by 10, and the two legs are made from one by twos, which are glued and screwed into the two by 10. On the bottom is padding, see them there? Let's take a look up close at the pulley. Back there is another little bronze bushing, then there's a washer, then you have all the grease on the bore of the 5 8 bronze bushing, then I made a Teflon washer, and then a large washer, and then I cut the groove for the E-clip. Over here is the pivot point on the, on the motor. On the back side there's another screw where you could loosen to let this motor swing downward to put the belt on and off. Once the belt is back on, you push the pulley that way. And then on the back side is a screw, which I'll show you right now. You're now looking at the rear side of the crank generator. It's rated right around 40 watts or a little under. I have a capacitor bank here, which can be charged up and discharged later. That's 100 farads. You have five 500 farads in series, and that yields 100 farads. Now, there's a few different ways I can use the output on this. I can have a regulated output, which I set for 12 volts. So as I crank this wheel, I'll have a regulated 12 volt output on the red screw and the black. If I want an unregulated output, I could slide the switch to that position, and now I effectively bypass the DC to DC converter. And there's also a little shot key 3 amp diode, and the purpose of that diode is to prevent the 12 volts that's feeding in directly from this permanent magnet alternator from going into the output side of the DC-DC converter. The power then flows around this board to that screw. 
And the reason why I wanted this is because the power is slightly higher. This board is about 92 to 95% efficient. But for maximum efficiency, I wanted to be able to disconnect this board so I could have the full output coming off of this post, which is unregulated, and also take that unregulated output to charge up this bank of capacitors. Now, I also added right here, let me lift the camera up and show you. Now, right over here, you're going to see a little board after the switching DC to DC step-down converter board. The purpose of that board is to watch these outputs. It's going to monitor the voltage, and this green light will come on when the voltage rises to 12.2 volts or higher. And the reason why I like that, because it lets me know if everything is working fine as I'm cranking the generator, and also makes sure that I do not overcharge the bank of capacitors when I crank it using the unregulated mode. Inside this plastic project box is where the two separate windings, the run and the start, are rectified and then combined before going into this board. If I don't want to use that board, I simply move the switch to the right where it is and it bypasses the board. If I want to use a regulated output up to 12 volts, then I could slide that to the left and now I'll have a regulated 12 volt output once I start cranking, you'll see the green light come on because I'm putting out higher than 12.2 volts. If I want to charge my bank of capacitors so I don't have to sit here and continually crank to use the power, I could charge up this entire bank and I could slowly drain it down. What I would do is I would push this over to the unregulated position. That gives me the maximum amount of power. And then I turn on the switch where it says on. Boom. Now this entire capacitor bank is connected to the generator so as I'm cranking I'm charging up this bank. Once this bank rises to the proper voltage of 12.2 volts or a little higher I'll know to stop because the green LED will be on. And then I can shut the switch off to prevent any usage from that bank. Now what else I did these capacitors are fairly well matched. I discharged and charged this bank several times and they're all within 5 or 8 percent of each other. But what I wanted to do to ensure that they do not go over the 2.7 is I installed four of these 1N4935 fast switching diodes in series across each capacitor. What will happen if the voltage rises too high the excess voltage will be shorted across the capacitor. If the voltage is at 2.7 volts it's going to be bleeding off around 16 milliamps. If it's 2.8, around 22. And if it goes to 2.9, this will allow around 35 milliamps. And at 3 volts, it'll let around 45 milliamps across these two terminals to get the voltage to drop. Once it reaches a certain point, and that's why I like this over the resistor, all the discharging stops. You put a resistor across here, it does a good job at balancing. But the problem is it's going to continually drain your capacitors down. You're going to lose a complete charge over time. When this capacitor drops to around 2.1 volts, you only have around 2 milliamps flowing across. So you can see it goes from 40 or 50 milliamps to get the voltage to drop from 2.8, 2.9 volts. And when it gets down to 2.1 volts, you're only shorting out 2 milliamps. So this is definitely the way to go. You want to use the 1N4935 one amp fast rectifiers like you see here four in series forward biased across each one of the capacitors and it does a fantastic job what I'm going to do now is show you what the windings look like inside this motor as well as show you what I did to the squirrel cage rotor how I drilled it out to accept the new neodymium magnets I used two of the one inch by three eighth inch thick disc magnets and forties and I used eight of the half inch by quarter inch disc magnets N52s. Here is the stator, the field winding. It's all ready to go to have the rotor inserted. I have my control box and I have my power outputs right here. All right, this is how I modified the rotor for my 3450 RPM two pole motor. That requires a north facing side and a south because it's only two poles. So what I did is I took five magnets, the two smaller ones on each side, half inch by quarter inch, N50 neodymium magnets. And in the center, I used a one inch by three eighths 
N40 neodymium magnet. So these are all north facing. Then you go to this side, and these over here are all south facing. And that's it. Simple as that. If I was using a four pole motor, I more than likely would have just used four of the large magnets. It would have been north, then it would have been south, then it would have been north, and then it would have been south. Now I'm going to need two points to mount this generator. One will be a pivot to put the belt on, and the other will actually lock it in. There is one on this side, which is in a good spot. It's near the bottom. And over here on this side, the problem was that this hole was mounted at the top instead of at the bottom. So I came up with a solution, and that solution was to cut a slit in the very thick part where the bolt goes through into the housing and make a tab like this and insert it into that slit. So to give you a better look, let me just slide it this way a hair, look down on it. This will go in, nice and flush against the unit, and if you look inside, the hole is lined up perfect. That's the way it goes. I now have the second mounting location exactly where I need it. Now using this DC to DC step down board, I could go anywhere from 1 volt up to say 15 volts and I could adjust that output using this potentiometer so I don't have to have 12. I'm going to place a link where you could pick up this 3 amp step down converter in the video description area. Now for the first demo I'm going to show you the unregulated voltage output and I'm also going to hook up this 3 amp 35 watt scooter headlamp. It's an incandescent bulb, draws around 3 amps. I'll show you how well it works when I crank with the generator. Let me get this connected up. I'm going to put this on the max setting. The highest voltage, unregulated, will show up right here. Alright, so you just saw how well that worked. We hit right around 13. Now I'm going to switch to regulated output. Let's see what we get on that one. And you saw that puts out around 11.95. Okay, let's take a look at the current output going to this bulb from the crank generator. All right, this is on the 1195 12 volt regulated setting. And then I'm going to show you on the bypass setting, which is unregulated voltage. You'll see higher current because of the higher voltage being outputted. All right, 35 watt bulb, regulated output, watch the current. Right, that's 2.8, 2.8 amps. Now I'm going to put it to bypass mode, and you'll see higher current because of a higher voltage. And as you saw, it went to 305, so this does have excellent output. I could push it to three and a quarter if I really spun it faster, but for all practical purposes, 38 watts is the maximum. All right, right now we're back on unregulated. The capacitor bank is off. You're showing no voltage. When I turn on this switch, you now see the charge that's stored in this bank of capacitors. If I would like to charge it, I'm better off pushing it to full power output, which is bypass mode, bypassing the DC converter. When I crank the wheel, you can watch the charge going into this bank of capacitors right on the meter. It does take a while and you will get a great workout doing it. I'll start slow first. I'll stop. You see it brought it up about a half of a volt in that short period of time. Keep going. Now I go either direction. It doesn't make a difference. If I turn my body around I can go this way.
Now it starts off very easy, putting the charge into the capacitor, but as you near that 12 volts, it gets a little more difficult. You have to spin the wheel faster, and then you can get up to 12.5. If you're in a campground, if you're in a bunker, whatever you need, <laughs> you'll have a power supply that you could pull off of, and you're not going to have to sit there to keep cranking to do it. So that's the beauty of having the bank, is that you don't have to continually do this. If the amperage draw of the load that you're using is not that high, this will run for a very long time because it's 100 farads. If it's drawing 2 amps, whatever you want to do, you might want to plug in an inverter, you could get a short burst of power, and you could run something that uses high current intermittently. The next thing I want to show you, let me take this away, is I'm going to open this cover up and disconnect one of the wires so I could put my scope on the AC output from here and show you what it looks like on my scope. But before that, I'm going to give you a close-up of this bracket that I made, how this is all done. There's a foam pad between this aluminum rail and each one of these ultra capacitors. See right there. We're connected to one of the sets of windings from the motor. I didn't disconnect all the wires leaving, so it is going to affect the waveform a little, but you can still see the waveform output on the scope. That was one set of windings. Now we're going to take a look at the other. This is the other winding now. The previous one was the start winding. This one here is the run winding. And there you have it. That's my crank generator. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please rate it a thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Also be sure to check out my video playlist as well. Thank you very much for watching.